Revelation chapter 3. There's a key phrase in here I'll be preaching from tonight. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse number 1, And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come, as thee, as, uh, come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And I want to preach tonight on verse number 2. Strengthen, be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now, the church at Sardis, uh, it had a bit of a reputation. Uh, not, um, not a reality, though. It had a, a name that it was living, but it was dead. There's a lot of churches that have, uh, you can have the name Living Baptist Church and can be dead as a doornail. Uh, the name does not make you alive. It is in what you do uh, that makes you alive. It is in who meets with you that makes you alive. It is not in the tradition of religion that keeps you alive. It is in the presence of Almighty God that keeps you and makes you alive. The only uh, thing commendable about some uh, churches or denominations is their heritage. Outside of that, uh, they have no life at all. I've been to uh, churches when I was driving a truck um, over the last several years, and I would stop into a church, and I'd go in there and... Uh, and, and sometimes I met really great churches, and I was in really wonderful churches who I was able to glean some ideas from, or I was motivated or encouraged from, and heard great preaching from. And I've been to other churches that were just like, whoa, I, I got to get out of this place. Uh, I, I, I was better off staying, staying in the truck. Uh, I was better off reading the Bible by myself in the cab of my truck than, than coming here and getting all dressed up. Man, I bought a collared shirt for this. I, I got up and combed my hair for this. I should have just stayed in the truck and met with Jesus there because this is this is dead dry bones. And I'm not trying to be judgmental, um, but uh, judge, but judge righteous judgment, you know. Um, uh, and, and all they have is a heritage, a heritage, a tradition, a tradition. Well, if the tradition and the heritage is not aiding in the future and aiding in the present to bring souls to Christ and to um, uh, uh, revive relationships and revive uh, uh, people's walk with God and revive people's giving, then I'm not quite sure what that heritage and tradition uh, is all about. Tradition is supposed to have a meaning. So you got to ask yourself tonight, as the as a church or a denomination or the Church of Sardis, are you alive or are you dead? Are you alive or are you dead? Now, you're a born-again Christian. You got saved, amen. You, you've been saved. How many of y'all saved? You said, I got saved. You saved? Hey. Oh, amen. You got saved. You got born again. Now, the Spirit, now, God says in the Scriptures that uh, you have to quicken. Quicken, and that word means made alive. Your spirit, he's made you alive. We see, you, we see this, you know, we see the flesh and bones. This is not Jake Jackson. This is just the shed, amen? This is just the wrapping. And oh, what pretty wrapping it is. <laughs> and oh, what wrapping it is, you know? Some people like their wrapping and some people don't. But this is the way you got it. I don't, I'm not chasing a rabbit here. But bless God, you, have, you better like yourself because that's the way God made you. That's the way God made you. The way you look and how tall you are and all those different things, that's the way God made it. Just, just be in love with yourself in the context of Scripture. 
That way you can love others, amen? Love others as you would love yourself. Right. Now, you got to ask yourself, sure, I'm alive. I'm alive. The spirit inside of me is quickened. I'm going to heaven when I die. But goodness gracious, are there fruits that follow that aliveness? If there's an alive tree, it has a fruit. If it's not bearing fruit, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Now, are we alive or are we dead? So I want to talk to you, preach to you, talk to you, teach you, everything in between. I don't, I don't know how it's going to come out. It may come out in a teaching form or a preaching form or just a conversation form. It's going to come out one way or another about strengthening the things that remain. Strengthening the things that remain. So I want us tonight to examine our own lives and see if there are some things that need to be strengthened or they are going to die. If you don't strengthen it, it will die. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's a very important stuff. And I feel my heart goes out to people who I can name names tonight about people who used to sit where you sit and people who used to sing the songs that you sing and used to do the things that you do. And I'm not saying they, uh, they're not involved in a minute. Some, very few who are uh, that have left here, very few uh, over the last uh, almost 30 years are involved in a, in a, in a ministry capacity. Uh, most uh, the devil got a hold of, most um, uh, found themselves going back to Egypt uh, that, that, have, that have left. Um, uh, we, so we have to examine ourselves and look inside and see if there are some things that need to be strengthened or they're going to die. And I've seen people have things that needed to be strengthened and they did not strengthen them and they died. What's that old saying? Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. Well, we let's be a use it Christian. Number one, number one, don't let the freshness of your salvation die. Don't let the freshness die. Here you are, you're a new convert. You're like, man, this is great. God is good. I was on my way to hell. Now I'm on my way to heaven. The Bible is new. I've got all these questions. You know, how do you feel when you have all your questions answered? How do you feel when you've been, do you feel the same at 30 years of salvation that you did at one year of salvation? Do you still, and you say, well, it's just natural to have sort of a, you know, no folks, you should never, ever, ever get over the fresh, the freshness of what God has done. And I'm not just talking about salvation. I'm talking about getting over the freshness of an answer to prayer. Man, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. There's some, still some things in my life that I look at and I'm still, I'm not over it. I'm not over this answer to prayer. It's still fresh. And I tell you, don't let the freshness of the mercies of every morning get over you. Don't let them die. Don't let the mercies of God die on your watch. The Bible says be watchful and strengthen the things that remain. Watchful for what? Hey, examining yourself. You got to look inward. Dare to look inward, amen. Look inward and say, man, I the world, the flesh, and the devil, that's, a, that's an attack. Not only the attack from without, but the attack from within. Not only the dangers from without, but the dangers from within. And I don't want the freshness to die. And I love the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms has a wonderful way of expressing the soul and the condition of mankind. It says in Psalms 1 verse 3, and if you'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I like prospering. I like success. I like it. I, it never gets old. Winning never gets old to me. I always love to win. Um, I, I believe Michael Jordan said, I hate losing more than I like winning. I expect to win. I expect to win. It's a part of what I do like. Shouldn't you be quoting like Tozer and, and, and Hudson and Roloff and you're up here quoting Michael Jordan? It's about winning. It's about winning. I, I want to win. I never get over winning. I expect to win. I have, oh, winning never gets old to me. Doesn't, and I don't mean by this that we win at all costs, you know, by cheating and lying and stealing. And, no, no, no. But I'm talking about winning in life. Winning as a Christian. If we're on the winning side and we're uh, 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 of victory in Jesus, if we have the victory and we have, we've won, then it's not supposed to get old to us. It's not, we're not supposed to just kind of um, uh, slough it off and be, let it become uh, normal. It's always supposed to be new and fresh. And the church in Ephesus had lost its first love. 
if you, if you continue in the scripture. And we should have a sense of wonder. We should have a sense of, of, of mystery about this all the time. I don't know my folks, y'all yeah, just take some time every once in a while just to look out into, I don't care if it's your backyard. You ought to just gaze into the trees or gaze into the sky. And there ought to be a sense of wonder about a God who can do incredible things. About a God that looked down on you and saved you. And we ought not ever get over that. We ought not ever get over it. And if you say, Brother Jackson, you say, don't let your freshness die. But how do I not let it die? All right, number one, under don't let it die. Don't let the freshness die. You need to bathe, soak, drench, immerse yourself in the Word of God. This one chapter a day, well, I want to read the Bible through the year, so I read 3.5 chapters a day. That's fine. I'm all for goals. I'm all for setting those things. But folks, if you're just reading the three and a half chapter because the end goal is to read your Bible through in a year, you're missing the point. The point is not to read your Bible through in a year, but the point is in reading the Bible to glean things from Scripture that God is speaking to you, that you may, that your heart may be encouraged, that your heart may be convicted, that your mind may be changed. Man, I read the Bible, and the Bible said that when he called um, uh, Samuel to go anoint um, uh, Solomon, no, not Solomon, so as the king, you know, and he went and hid, and he's like, no, I'm not the guy. The Bible says that he gave Solomon a new heart and made him a new man. And that man, that struck a chord with me. That struck a chord with me. I'm like, man, I want God to make me a new man in this area or that area. I want God to give me a new heart. And maybe you have a heart of fear. Maybe you have a heart of, I had a grown man tell me some years ago, he said, man, Brother Jackson, I'm a, I'm a coward. I'm a coward. And I said, well, God can take your coward heart and give you a heart of courage. God can make your heart something new. Folks, but you've got, you'll never know the promises of God. You'll never be able to examine yourself righteously and correctly and biblically unless you know that book. Folks, you've got to bathe in that book. That book is the guidebook for life. Man, I'm just having such a hard time with my kids. That book will tell you. I'm having such a hard time with my relationships. That book will tell you. I'm having such a hard um, uh, time with my finances or my health or whatever it may be. That book right there has the solutions and has um, uh, the warnings and has all that we need to know on how or it has the principles of how to handle these things. And this, 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 the Word of God. What is the Word of God? Just a book full of knowledge? Just a, a book full of do's and don'ts? No, it's not a book about a bunch of a bunch of what's. It's about it's a book about a who, and that who is Jesus Christ. And if we'll get to know the who of that book, our lives can be turned around. Amen. Not only do we need to bathe in the Word of God, but we need to believe God for great and new things. Believe God for great and new things. Look, I believe I live in a, a, a live of, of, of reality. I get that, but I'm, I'm a bit of a dreamer. I can't lie. I'm a bit of a um, a hoper. <laughs> I like to dream. I like to hope. I like to have. I like to. I have a vision. I can, man, I can stand at the end of this parking lot and go, man, if God keeps us here, I'd like to do that with this place, and I'd like to see that. And I can see a new parking lot, and I can see a rebuilt steeple, and I can see uh, uh, this and that, and I can see buses out here, and I can see faces of children and of men and of women that I've not even met yet. I like to dream. I like to think of great big things, not only for the ministry, not only for my pastor. I don't ever dream of standing in front of thousands of people. That's not the vision I have. The vision I have is pastoring this church and, and, and God doing something big here. But I have dreams and visions as a pastor. I have dreams and visions as a husband. Dreams and visions as a father and as, a, 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 as an American. I mean, I, I, I see things. And I know we live in a world of reality, but bless God, this life... This life is doom and gloom if we don't have hope. And this life is doom and gloom if our hope is not based in the one who, who, who is an expert in making the impossible possible. Folks, we've got to believe God for great and mighty new things. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Man, oh man, if you don't believe that, if you say, Brother Jackson, I wish I believed that, I feel sorry for you if you doubt that scripture. I feel sorry for you if you don't believe that scripture. I feel sorry for these people who are trying to find their self-worth and find their meaning in life void of God and void of eternity. Folks, the Christian, it ought to be the Christian 
Believe God for great and new things. You don't want to let the freshness die? Then get on your knees before God. Then we ought to have bruised knees. There ought to be divots in the crown where we pray so much. There ought to be teardrops stained on our couch and teardrops stained on our clothes where we say, Oh, God in heaven. And I'm not trying to say you got to be a, you have to be some spiritual zealot. But man, oh man, the heart cries out. But it ought to cry out to God to do something great and big. There used to be some of you who came up to me and said, Brother Jackson, what do you think if I tried this? Brother Jackson, what do you think if I aspired to do that? Brother Jackson, this is what I want to do. And before you know it, a month goes by, then three months, and six months, and eight months go by. And you don't, you're not that same person. You've drifted so far. But guess what? God still knows the calling on your life. And you might have given up on that calling. You might have given up on that dream. But God still knows it. And if you'll just get back to God, God can do something great in your life. That freshness can come again. That, that wonderful feeling can come again. So many people sit in conferences all across our country, week in and week out. Old past conference, sword conference, fundamentals conference, uh, uh, whatever conference. Everybody sit in conference. And man, the music and the testimonies and the atmosphere and their hearts are stirred. And they say, man, I want to go out and do that. But man, when the singing is done, and the testimonies are done. And the preaching is done. Is that stir still there? Is that fire still there? Are you like that Jeremiah who said, man, oh man, I want to quit. I give up. I'm not doing it anymore. But bless God, I could not stay. There was a fire shut up in my bones. And I could not stay. I had to go. I mean, I want that freshness. I want to get up every morning and say, um, uh, uh, sing the doxology, amen. Get up every morning and sing how good God is. And, and thank God for all he's done. And just give God all the glory and give God all the praise. You say, Brother Jackson, how can you do that? I'll tell you how. By not letting the freshness die. Right. By not letting the freshness die. And if you don't want your freshness to die, if you don't want to be one of those lower lip Christians, if you don't want to be one of those Eeyore Christians, if you don't want to be one of those doom and gloom Christians, then you can't let the freshness die. And the way to not let the freshness die is to bathe in the Word of God. Hey, get yourself a King James Bible and read it every day. Amen. Get yourself a Bible and read it every single day. You say, where do I read it? I'll tell you where. You come up to me, I'll give you assignments every week. I promise, if you'll be faithful to come to church and ask me where to read, I'll be faithful in telling you where to read. Amen. I'll make a deal with you. You say, Brother, Jake, I, I, Brother Jackson, Pastor, your eminence. No, 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 Brother Jackson, Pastor Jake, I don't know where to read. I don't know what to read. Brother Jackson, this is what I got going on in my life. And I'll give you scripture that will encourage you and help you. I'll do that. I'll make the deal with you. But if you've got to bathe in the Word of God, believe God that, can, that He can do great things, and then beg God for fullness and power. Wait, man, man, come on now. Come on now. How many Christians today, and on Sunday morning, amen, American Sabbath, Sunday morning, how many people were on their face this morning or last night saying, Dear God in heaven, I've got to have your power. I've got to have your power. You say, Brother Jackson, I just kind of, I don't see the need for it. I just don't understand why I need the fullness of God's power. Here's, here, no, here's, here's the actual question. Why not? Come on. Why not have the fullness of, if you can have the fullness of the power of God, why, listen folks, and God said, let there be, and there was. We're talk, I'm not talking about you speaking worlds into existence, but I'm talking about you have sway and you have say at the throne of God because you've got the power of God in your life. Dear God, give me power. What is power? It's influence. Dear God, give me power. Power, love, and wisdom. Oh God, give me power. Power for what? So I can get stuff to consume it upon my own lusts? No, God, I want power to influence people to get saved or turn back to God. That's the influence I want. I don't want influence for people to fill my pockets with money. I don't want influence to, to persuade people to see it my way. I don't want influence to, to, to be able to manipulate people like a, like a mob boss, like a president, like a dictator, like a king. No, I want influence. I want the creator's influence to filter through me so I can help other people turn to Jesus Christ. Well, why would you want that? Because I haven't let the freshness die. If you let the freshness die, you'll give a hoot about soul winning. If you let the freshness die, you won't care about the chapter of the day. If you don't care, if you let the freshness die, you're not concerned with strengthening the things that remain. 
The devil, man, he's been at it for 6,000 years. He knows mankind. He knows, how to be, he knows how to knock you down. He knows how to knock you down. But folks, we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything. We cannot do anything uh, 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 thoroughly and truly without begging God for fullness and power. Fullness and power. You preach sermons, you teach your class, you work on your Sunday, Sunday school bus, you do the ladies' meetings, you're not sure, you do all these things, and you're like, man, I just don't sing. I've got the heritage down. I've got the tradition down. I'm lockstep in all the do's and the don'ts. Why don't I seem to be getting any results? I'll tell you why. Because you're doing it on your own power. You're not doing it in the power of God. You don't want to let the freshness die. Bathe in the Word of God. Believe and ask or ask and believe God for great and new things. Beg God for fullness and power. And then number two, don't let your fruit bear and die. Don't let the fruit bear and die. The Bible says in John 15, 8, herein, in this, this is the thing. Herein is my Father glorified. That ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. You want to glorify God? Bear fruit. Well, how do we bear fruit? Well, um, one of the most uh, basic ways of bearing fruit is the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. One of the ways to bear fruit, and I know the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, those ones. It's about the only ones I have. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, but the fruits of the Spirit, yes, bearing fruit, the fruit or the example, the likeness, the attributes of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a soul winner. Jesus Christ was a preacher and a teacher, or he was a teacher, but he proclaimed the gospel, amen. amen. And that's what it's all about. I mean, come on now. That's why we put so much emphasis on soul winning. <clears throat> soul winning, soul winning. And I understand we can get tunnel vision. We get we, soul winning because that comes down to there's going to come time when everybody that ever has been born. Right now is being born in the future. Everybody, every, every living soul that ever has been, when God says the eternal clock is done, they're going to be in one of two places. That's why we're soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning, and it ought to be. But we've got to have that balance of, of the necessity of the saints and salvaging the saved and saving the lost. There are many works that we, have, we ought to do. But folks, don't let your fruit bearing die. Man, I want to glorify God in my life. Well, bear fruit. Luke 13 says, uh, He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his, garden, in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of, this, of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth the ground? What's the point of this tree being here? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I dig shall, uh, till I shall uh, dig about it and, and dung it, basically uh, uh, generate that soil. And it bear, and if it bear fruit, well, if not, then thou shalt cut it down. So, folks, what right do we have to occupy a place? Here I am in church. I'm a dude. I'm an elder. I'm a in superintendent. What right do we have to occupy ground if we're not bearing any fruit? And I'm not talking about you bringing tons of people into church. I'm talking about that as well as Christian attributes. Where's the teaching, elders? Where's the edification? I'm not, please understand this isn't a review. Uh, 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 but in general, where's, where, where is the... Uh, Paul taught it. He said, this is the order of the church. And the elders have a job. Hey, those who can't anymore are supposed to teach those who can. Where's the exhortation? Where's the encouragement? Where's the love? Where's the patience? Where's the teaching? Where's that fruit bearing? Where is it? And if I'm a tree bearing no fruit and giving no shade, Jesus said it's to be cut down and cast into the fire. So many people think that's hell, but it's a, he's speaking in parable. He's, not, he's saying, what do we do with branches? We throw them in fire. That's what we do. So, uh, you don't want you say, well, Jackson, I want to bear fruit. Well, number one, acknowledge your barrenness. Acknowledge, hey, man, I, okay, listen, step one to making a comeback is acknowledging. I'm, I'm not where I need to be. Acknowledge your fruitlessness. Secondly, Jesus said, abide in the vine. 
You want to bear fruit? Abide in the vine. You want to bear fruit? Go back to the freshness and get in the word. You want to bear fruit? Folks, I can't. Um, Deacon, uh, our little, uh, he'll, he'll be two in April. Um, we'll turn on music and he'll just sit in the back seat and howl. <laughs> Ooh. He'll hear music and hum along with it. He'll, and he'll just sing. He'll just sing. And he sees dad outside shooting hoops on the, man, we, if, if, if there's a, a quintessential Indiana hoop, we have it. It's a hoop attached to a barn, you know, and you know, we're going to go out there and shoot hoops. You know what he wants to do? He wants to go out and shoot hoops. If dad's cleaning his guns, you know, sharpening his knife, you know what he wants to do? He wants to go get his. And you know what kids do? They want to mirror the things that they see. And really what they're doing is they're seeing and ingesting through the eye gate and the ear gate, and then they are acting out what it is that they are ingesting. So many people are slow to behave like Christ because they are not in take, in taking in Christ. We're so slow to behave like Christ because we're not ingesting the Word of God. We're not bathing in the Word of God. <laughs> Can't say it enough. We, it's probably one of the most quoted things around here by Mr. Spurgeon. I'd rather soak my soul in several verses than rinse my hands in several chapters. Now, I'm all for several chapters as long as you can soak your soul in them. Now, I've read the Bible before and I'm reading, I'm reading, and then I go, okay, I'm, I'm full. That's, <laughs> that's it. That, I, I, I remember specifically, it sticks in my head. Um, I read six verses one time. Six verses, and I was I was stuck. Like that that filled me up. Whoa! And then I mulled over it, and mulled over it, and meditated on it as say la, meditate and think on. And man, oh man, if you want to be a fruit bearing Christian, hey, um, it's um, it's Dakota and Brandon. what is it? Brandon. 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 Dakota and Brandon. As of right now, that's fruit bearing. Here they are, two Sunday nights in a row. That's from Solon. From, I bet you read your Bible, don't you, Mike? Yes, sir. Every once in a while. Uh, Brother Mike reads his Bible, no. gets somebody saved, bring them to, brings them to church. Hey, man, he, he walked up to me and handed me a bunch of decision slips today. I'm like, brother, stop. You're making me look bad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, brother. But what you got to do to bear fruit? Hey, maybe some of your marriages need fruit bearing. Maybe some of your, your, your friendships need fruit bearing. Maybe you got a friend who's on the cusp of getting saved if you just act like a Christian. If you just show some fruit on the tree. If you just say, I'm a born again Christian, I'm not saying you got to walk around and I'm a born again independent fundamental Bible believing back. I'm not saying you got to do that. Walk around and throw people on the head of the Bible. No! It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. But we cannot have what we have not earned, and Christ told us, abide in the line and you'll bear fruit. And then always, you can, and number three, you can't discount prayer. The Bible says praying for prayer and supplication about everything. God, I want to bear fruit. God, I, God, I want to bear fruit. God, I want souls. God, I, I, I want to let my light shine. God, I want to make a difference. God, I, I, I want to, I want this. God, I want to, I want to be a good husband. God, I want, I want the, 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 the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be pleasing to you. Oh, God, I want to bear fruit. Why don't you start asking him for it? Well, no, not now. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care. If you care about bearing fruit, you cast it at the feet of Jesus. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. And if God looks down and he sees that you want to bear fruit, well, here's one of my favorite verses again. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro about the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. And if you say, God, I want to bear fruit. God, I want to make a difference in this earth. God, I want to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, Heavenly Father, would you help me? God, would you guide me? Lord, as I ask for it, and then I go into your word, and then I go into the church, and I go about living it the best I know how, God, guide my steps and lead me and show me the way I ought to live. And, 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 and the Bible says, so teach us what we're supposed to say in that same hour. Listen, if you're pour, pouring stuff in, you ever heard, you ever been around somebody and maybe the cuss word slipped and they went, I, I, don't know how, I don't know where that came from. 
I'll tell you where it came from. It came from the eye gate and the ear gate. And it went into the heart. And then it came out. You will repeat the things that you see and hear. And then, and then there's another person on the, on the other side of that coin that says, man, I was testifying to somebody. I was sharing some things with them. And man, there's this, like, just this wisdom started coming out of me. I have no idea where it came from. If you're abiding in the vine and bathing in the book, then don't be surprised when you start speaking the things that you've right. been hanging out with. Right. Don't be surprised when you start testifying. Don't be surprised. And I don't mean like some supernatural speaking in tongues weirdness, but I'm talking about some wisdom came out of you and you walked around with and you walked away from that conversation going, oh, man. <laughs> uh, maybe I need ordained. You know, you walk out going, man, I don't know where that came from. And then you turn around and the Holy Spirit says, hey, it came from, and, oh yeah, man, God, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much that I was able to give that wisdom. Amen. Thank you so much, man, I've done funerals before, like that. Oh, I gotta say a few. What do I got? I don't know what to say. But before I go into that place, man, I get on my knees before God, the dear God in heaven, our souls, eternal souls. First funeral I did was for um, uh, Paul Williams' sister. And, um, my dad told me, he, he was supposed to do the funeral. He was sick. I believe so. Pawing it off on me. Uh, I gave him the funeral. He said, don't worry, it'll be a small funeral. Not a bunch of people will be there. As of now, it's the second largest, third largest funeral I've done. <laughs> I walked into that place, it was packed. I'm like, oh no. What do I do? And I walked out of there going, thank you, God. Thank God, thank you. Thank you for giving me wisdom to know what to say delicate situation. I can't just get up there and be, you know, maverick with the whole thing. Because somebody's loved one has passed away. I've got to, I have to say something. I've got to do something. I've got to speak right words. And if I'm not abiding in the vine and asking God for help, then I won't get it. Ask and he shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and he shall find. And then thirdly, thirdly, so number one, don't let the freshness die. Number two, don't let your fruit die. And the fruit bearing die. And then number three, don't let your finances die. Don't let your finances die. 1 Corinthians 4 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Folks, the Bible says uh, if we deal with a slack hand, we'll become poor. It's all good being generous. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a balance between being uh, a generous and a slack hand. There's a balance between being greedy and being frugal. Uh, don't let your finances die. So if you find yourself slothful, if you find yourself giving money to the world, if you find yourself, um, man, you can't be, you can't have a car insurance without a portion of that money going to some liberal agenda somewhere. You know, you can't eat a meal without some of that money going to, you know, everybody, you know, getting rid of gas cars and everybody having electric ones. You can't, you can't, I you know there's no merit to that point, but you get what I'm saying. But folks, if, you're, if your money is just, just pouring out of your pockets, um, Scripture calls it slothful. Let's not be slothful in our dealings. So what we have to do is examine our situation. Where's my money going? What's happening to my money? And I'm not saying when you re-examine and readjust your finances, you give all of the, uh, the, the, the dividends, all of the extra that you're now saving to the church. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you be wise with it so God can bless it, so God can use it, and so you can make a difference for eternity. Uh, I believe it was Dr. Bob Gray who said, reading a book, uh, one of his books, and he said, let, let me put it this way, wood, hay, stubble is everything you do on earth for earth. Gold, silver, precious stone is everything you do on earth for heaven. Well, I want to use the money that God has has uh, uh, so graciously given me through the, the hands that are his and the feet that are his and the brain that is his and the eyes that are his and the body functions that are his and the money that I earn with not my body, his body. What? No, you're not, you're not your own. You've been bought with Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your members. So I go out and earn a paycheck. I want to glorify God with it. Um, and I'm not saying we've all got to live like um, uh, the Amish. I'm not saying that we've all got to live um, uh, in, in a cat, old cat, and was like, oh, we want to live in cat and homes with fireplaces. And, uh, no, I'm not saying that. Um, uh, I'm not saying we have to live uh, in poverty. But what we need to do is exercise stewardship. Stewardship. 
Strengthen the things that remain before they die, the Bible says. It says, uh, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Man, you, you, they were fruit bearing trees ready to die. The joy of your salvation is about ready to die. Somebody's going to have to remind you that you're saved. And our finances. And then, I mean, there's so much. There's, I like alliteration. Faith, finances, freshness, uh, fellowship, faith, uh, future, faithfulness. Don't let the fire die. All these things are stirring up in you. I, I got so much here. There's no way to, to, to go over all of it. However, you got to examine your life and look into your life and say, man, what are some areas in my life that are going out? What are some areas in my life that need strengthening? What do I need to strengthen in my life to be a champion, to continue to be a soldier, to continue to have, uh, uh, to be used of God? Brother Tom Malone asked the question. He said, ask yourself, is the hand of God present in your life today? Well, that's a, that's a serious question. Is the hand of God present in your life today? Can you look at your life and say, God is doing this. God did that. And hey, I'll tell you this. If you right now, you sit there and you say, yeah. Well, you're like, I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe you're going through a time of chastisement. Praise God for it because his hand is on you. If God's hand's not on you even in chastisement, then you have to worry. Then you should fear. But if, God is in, if God's hand in your life is a hand of correction at this time in your life, be thankful for it. Because he chasteneth whom he loveth. But is the hand of God doing anything in your life? Is the hand of God in your life? If not, ask for it. If not, ask for it. Dear God, do something in my life. God may be working to get you into a place or a position. God's timing is always different. God's timing is, is incredible. Uh, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Um, uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, and I won't go back. No turning back. If you'll have that Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 mindset, you say, I trust in the Lord with all my heart, with my heart, all my heart. I'll lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, I'll acknowledge him. And guess what he'll do? He will direct your paths. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to the doctor. You know, God, bless God. God help Dr. Phil. Stop listening to all the psychoanalysts, psychoanalysts and psychologists and all those people out there and you find somewhere where you get alone with God and he'll lead you to the people who will help you get yourself straight. Nobody wants to go through life weak. Weak. Go through life meek, but don't go through weak. And by, you do that by strengthening the things that remain. And you do it by living in the word of God and then living it out. Um, I would like to have, Ms. Jennifer, will you come forward? I'd like to have a, a collective uh, invitation. I would like, if you'll allow me to go on uh, to the Lord on, on, uh, on your behalf, I'll pray for us. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll have Ms. Jennifer dismiss us. Uh, so uh, would you bow your head and close your eyes with me, please? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, now, you, you pray along silently, and you go to the Lord with me this time. Heavenly Father, Jeremiah says we're prisoners of this earth. Uh, from dust we were made and dust we were returned. Lord, this is a, it's a, it's a difficult place to live. Uh, and then, Lord, we, we that are born again, we put on this new life in Christ and then we try to go out and reach, reach people who are doomed to hell. And Lord, we ourselves are, though biblically set free from sin, we still find ourselves battling the flesh, temptation, the, the want to quit. Our Heavenly Father, 
we can live an incredibly, uh, I say, supernatural and biblically abundant life. We can have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, I think everybody here, if they could pick a tree to, to emulate and say, that's what I want to be, there could be a, a mighty oak or a sycamore, uh, something big and strong and towering, something that gives refuge to the birds and the animals, something where people can get shade under, something that people say, man, we can't, we can't cut that down. Look how mighty that thing is. Lord, I believe we can live a majestic, God-powered, influential lives. There may be somebody in this room right now who says, I'm not, I'm not nobody. I, I, I can't accomplish anything. But Lord, the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Lord, so I, I would ask that when we sit down to open our Bibles, that you would give us understanding. Lord, open the hearts, the minds, give understanding to your people here that we may grow, that we may have a, an impact on this dark world. Lord, we love you. Forgive us when we act like we don't. Lord, help us to strengthen the things that, that are here with us now. Help us not let them die. You are a God of life and of resurrection. Help, help us to remember that, Lord, as we go about our week. Help us to worship you in the way that we live. Glorify you in fruit bearing, and then one day see you and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, thank you again for the cross, for Jesus, his blood, and his resurrection. Lord, I'd ask that you'd give us safety as we go about our way. Help our path to cross the path of somebody who wants to be saved. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You are dismissed.